Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Blacklist. A great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, Reddington ends up tracking down at least Andrew Kennison's last place. You know, like, uh, you know, ends up talking to his roommate, finds out he went missing. At the same time, we hard cut to Harold interrogating him. And then it all happens. It all culminates in Harold being like, yep, this is the dude, Andrew. You kind of get more details about the sad situation of his wife and why he made that device in the first place. So, and then the moment, the moment Harold sees the picture, Andrew Kennison, he's like, Whoa, world rocked down on So what are you going to do, Cooper? This is the time to tell the truth. But he didn't because there's too much. He's too deep. This is a situation where he kind of tells Task Force, yeah, uh, go to Boston, look into this. But like you have all the information. You know where Andrew Kinnison is. Is you know you have him in witness protection. Maybe Harold had multiple opportunities to handle this situation way differently than he did. Not even just in this episode alone, but let's just focus on this episode for right now. He should have probably been in the like, all right, we have him in witness protection. We need to question him. But Harold's too deep in this because he dragged his wife Charlene into it with lies. Plus Lou covered it up. So like, it's not just his life and his situation that's screwed. His wife, his bud would also get screwed over as well. So that's why he didn't, even when given this opportunity, still didn't come clean. And so he ends up talking to Lou about it. And now knowing, right, the person who uh, who wanted him to get rid of Andrew Kinison, the person that is blackmailing him might be, it's not might be, it's definitely connected to Elizabeth's death. And it's like, yo, like that, that realization last episode rocks me for it to hit, you know, Cooper's even more rock because it's like, I helped the guy. I got, I basically made a person disappear, like not dead, but obviously with witness protection. I made a guy disappear who's connected to Liz's death. I, I had no idea, you know? And so obviously the moment uh, Dimbe and Donald are there. They're asking questions. The guy's like, what are you guys talking about? He's like, what? He's like, the way he's alluding to it, it's like he's had contact with the feds, but it turns out the car belongs to Marshalls, but it's like, yeah, an FBI, like, the, he thought the feds, so, as he puts it, the right hand doesn't tell the left hand what it's doing, and then they go talk to the guy at the Marshalls, like, yeah, the Bureau asked us to do it. What? No, that's not possible. Yeah, you might want to talk to the, uh, di uh director, uh, Harold Cooper, and you're like, What? So now the squad got the task force squad of Park, uh, Dimbe, and Aram, and Donald. And I love that they're like, eh, everyone except for Aram being like, no, 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 no. There has to be more to this. There has to be some explanation for it. It's like, yeah, like, so what? He wanted Liz dead? I mean, that's also the thing, too. Why would he want Liz dead out of now? After everything that you guys went through in season eight to try and track her down to pull her back. She was a, she was a daughter to him. Like, why would he ever want to do that? He loved Liz. He overlooked so much of the dark stuff she went down because he always wanted to try and keep her on the right path. He, he always wanted what was best for her. He loved her so much. Like, but... None of them are thinking clearly because it's like, right, the evidence being what it is, but that's also the point. I mean, that's what, you know, sad byproduct of being blackmailed into these circumstances. So, but Aram was like, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to hear from him. And even Donald was like, you know, Aram's 100%. Because I guess like considering their circumstances, we've always been in a situation that Harold's kind of always had each of their back. They have their complicated circumstances, park, uh, wrestler, like, uh, Dembe as well so we got to trust this guy he's we worked for him for years and he's always been nothing but a good man even for what we've seen in his past he's been nothing but a good person so we need to trust him and I was wondering I was like okay so he's gonna have to sit down with the team nah who's he gonna have to sit down with first none other than Reddington because he's apologizing to Reddington and I love Reddington brings up the best point of all why didn't you turn to me it makes sense the problem is Harold says to himself he got too swung up and caught up in everything. He froze. But it's like, at this moment, you have a task force. You have the biggest mistake he made was not utilizing this incredible team he has in front. Like, he has the best of the best working for him. So he's basically been operating with not just one hand tied behind his back, two, because you have one of the greatest resources in front of you besides the task force. You have Raymond Reddington, one of the most renowned criminals with enough resources and connections that found out. Like, you could tell, at, like, a couple episodes back, Harold was getting that inkling, like, you could tell he was getting that itch, like, uh, maybe I should turn to Reddington, but he never did. 
He should have gone to Reddington long before. And I was like, I'm the criminal. I'm the one that should be able to go outside the lines of what you're not comfortable doing. Because despite everything, Reddington will easily think, uh, still thinks of Harold as a friend. Yeah, the relationship's a little complicated. But I think even Harold would say, like, there is there is some kind of kinship, friendship here, you know? But it's, yeah, Harold made that mistake. And now he won't help Reddington know exactly where the marshals are holding him but it's like right i don't actually need your help to find that out i, I have my own resources but because harold is like right we need to do this the right way because he wants to pay for what he's done so he tells the team exactly what's what and he also called cynthia you know and this is this is the biggest shit storm of big shit storms i mean you thought everything with liz going rogue dark side last season was wild dude this is some next level shit right here uh, because Harold wasn't really going for dark side, but the way he handled things. And the entire time, I'm like, are we going to find out lose the one behind us? We kept getting about some detective, but I feel like, yeah, she probably would have felt more like it would have been. L That's why I'm still like hesitant. Cause I'm like, is Lou just an innocent bystander in all of this? Who was just helping out his buddy, but he crossed the line and just, that she just dug her graves deeper or like Lou got some connection to this. I don't know. Even now, even with, even with the context of the entire episode, I still don't trust Lou. I just, I can't shake that. There's just some part of me is like, there's something up with him. I just, I, I feel like he's just there on purpose to kind of keep Harold digging a hole deeper but also as someone to keep an eye on Harold's movements to see how much he knows because there's too many opportunities throughout this episode where it's like yeah so and so had like too much time for like people to know something they shouldn't know that it's like how do you have access to all of this information how do you know something you're not possible there's no possibility for anyone to know that's what doesn't make sense about all this so Reddington kidnaps Andrew you know, and Andrew's trying to explain, like, no, 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 like, I built it because my wife is sick. He's like, no, 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 I don't care. We're past what the device is meant to do and stuff like that. I want to know you gave it to someone. It's like, normally you're supposed to go through the trial, the clinical trial process and stuff, but all that was canceled. He was desperate. He said a cop named Reginald Cole came up to him. I'm like, is this person actually a cop? Turns out he actually was. He's not a, currently an NYPD officer. He's a former NYPD detective, so... Then you add in the fact is that I was like, it was a couple years ago. I'm like, wait, you gave this? At first I was almost like, wait, how long ago exactly did you get this? Because now part of me is like, how long has this been sitting on the back? There's, I was like, because at first I was almost like, have they been planning to kill Liz for years? Like, was this the opportunity when like, when um, Townsend coming after Reddington, like this was the opportunity because like his defenses and everything was rocked because of everything that was going on at the time? Because uh, of like Liz's own counter strikes against him, plus um, I don't know. You know who else I kind of throw in this like really quickly in suspicious territory? Marvin. Marvin knows a little too much too. That I'm like, I don't know. Like let's not forget Reddington tortured him last season because he didn't realize it was was that last season. Like I, I want to say he tortured uh, Reddington last season. Reddington had him tortured last season because he didn't realize um, he thought Marvin was the one selling him out or something like that. If I remember correctly. So they kind of put that behind them but I'm like Marvin might be holding a grudge. At the very least he may not be the person 100% responsible for all this but maybe he plays some role in it. Wouldn't be the first time Reddington's had to pop one of the people on his team because it's like yeah and honestly wouldn't even be the second time Reddington's had to pop someone in his team that uh, ended up going behind his back. So, uh, the entire episode, I'm like, uh, Marv, I don't know, Marvin. I'm kind of a little shaky on you, too. You and Lou are in the same category for me. I'm like, I don't trust you now. Like, there's some part of me that's like, it, it might be a 50-50 split. I just cannot separate, like, for Lou nor Marv. I'm like 50-50 on whether I trust either one of them. So, we'll see. Because whoever it is has to have intimate enough knowledge about the task force, about the investigation. Because even Cynthia says it later on. It's like, there's this uh, this task force isn't known. Who knows it? High class, like, P 
people in the government know about it, but it's a, not a generally known thing. Some people here and there know of existence, like some people who's crossed paths with the task force trying to dismantle it because it's protecting a well-known criminal like Reddington. Plus, like the court system and stuff, because there was a whole thing back in, what was that, season six? When Reddington was in court and stuff like that. That's about it, but yeah. Funny enough, I break up all that court stuff. Harold's going down that route himself because he talks to Cynthia. He basically told her everything, and it's not going to look good. It's like, right, all the felonies he's accomplished, then t finding out, oh, Reddington took Andrew. That shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. No one's surprised in that regard. But Cooper is willing to turn himself in because this is the best way to handle things. It's like, you know, even Rom's like, well, then the task force will walk, but... But for Cooper, it's like, no, that's the that's the wrong move to make, because the fact is this task force is too important. We do too much good work. And so it needs to keep going, especially now knowing, you know, this is getting justice, not only for me for being blackmailed, but also we know this is all connected to Liz's death. So we need to get it justice for her because the um, the higher ups aren't too keen on the current circumstances. Because it turns out, despite all the good work they do, so many blacklisters they put away that, yes, Reddington may be a bad guy, but he's actually, he's like, he's done more for law enforcement than anyone. In which Cynthia's like, I will not deny that. Hell, she even says it later on, like, I'm not in any position to be in a high horse morally because of everything that went down last episode. But the fact that it matter is the higher ups, like a lot of promises were made on my behalf that he would be on a tighter leash this time around when this whole deal and a task force was reunited and him kind of still wilding. It's like they, they know he's still doing criminal stuff on top of being our informant. So, and once again, he constantly benefits from it too. So it's saving face because him continuing, continuing to do stuff. They know eventually is going to fully blow up in their faces. So they're trying to mitigate the damage. But now the plan is like, okay, so if we can find Reginald Cole, which they eventually do, if we can find Reginald, Nicole, if we can make this case stick, we can basically unravel this huge conspiracy and they'll be so focused, basically jerking themselves off so happy that something like this worked out so perfectly that they will forget a lot about Harold's transgressions. It's kind of what they're hoping for at the very least. So despite his reluctancy, like um, wrestler had to arrest him, but Cooper was like, no, you have to do it. I'm all about accountability. I want to hold other people accountable for their actions. How can I not, in turn, do the same thing for myself? Once again, shows how much of an honorable person he is. He regrets involving his wife, getting her to lie, um, under, um, and and she will she could end up getting just as much trouble for impeding an investigation and stuff like that. Plus, he also apologized to Task Force. So this Task Force is a family. Like, if he had been honest with them, they would have done everything they could to help him out. Like, despite his circumstances, they would have been like, right, there's something deeper here. We know who you are. That was also the thing, too, for wrestlers. Like, you cut... Reddington so much slack for what he does. Same thing for Elizabeth. You cut her so much slack for what she had, she had done from time to time. But that's also the thing. We got to be above board. We got to make this all happen and make it work. Um, we also found out just like we only got a little time with him. But man, did you find out how much of a sleazeball Reginald is. Like the fact is back when he was a, a New York detective, he was still doing some slimy stuff. There was like plenty of internal uh, affairs investigation into him. A key witness in it like ended up dying. So he's not above killing people, obviously. Then we see he's meeting with someone pretty high up, and he's like, she's like, oh, I want you to look into my opponent. Oh, in fact, in actuality, your opponent's squeaky clean. What I did instead, though, was look into you. You got some skeletons in your closet. Now you're paying me double, paying me to look into your opponent and paying me to keep quiet about what I know. I was like, Jesus, no, no honor, huh? It's like, man, that's almost, I guess because he knows he has high enough connections, I'm like, the fact is that you are like that, that you are so two-faced makes me go, why would anyone, like, someone would eventually kill you after they work with you because they couldn't trust you to keep your damn mouth shut. That's what I'd be worried about if I was in a criminal position of, like, working with Reginald. And, but like I said, he gets a phone call and lets him know that, like, someone's on the way. Now, I don't know if he knew about uh, the task force, like the feds on their way or whether he knew about Reddington. Either way, he knew someone called him up to be like, yo, get rid of the evidence. Someone's coming. 
luckily, like, Reddington got there first, but the task force ended up arresting him first. But it's like, no, do not just arrest him. You got to let him go because Reddington knows that this goes too high up. It's like, for him to know that I was coming, it's like someone tipped him off. And whoever it is knows about me. Cynthia gets the call. What do you mean there's a lawyer here to see him? And it's like, okay. I almost halfway expected Reddington to grab him then and there and then leave. But it's like, well, where were you going? There's literally one exit to that place. There's an entrance and an exit. That's about it. So, like, there's nothing else he could have done either way. So, it's like, yeah, like, how could you have really gotten him out of there? But that lawyer, it's like, yo, he's like, oh, let's talk about this. Oh, you were able to um, use an algorithm to undo the modulation on that voice. Yes, it sounds like cold, but that's the thing. Sounds like I'm like, oh, that lawyer talk. This guy, you're like, dude, I want to punch you in the face. I want to punch you in the face. I want to punch Reginald in the face. You guys are so snobby and just so like, ha 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 ha. We win checkmate. Like, oh, this is all a game. We got it down. Like, it's just the smugness. Just this oozing smugness, and you're just like, oh, I want to just punch you in your faces. It's like, oh, dude. The fact is that lawyer, like, LaCroix, uh, LaCroix, like, walked in there like it was nothing. I mean, it seemed like child's play. It's like, oh, this, 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 and this. Especially because Cynthia wants this investigation to go smoothly because it's the only, it's the best chance that Harold has. So, and he spits facts about, right, you don't have enough evidence. That's what they were kind of hoping for, to get this guy talking about who he works for. So the lawyer comes and gets him. It's like, yo, we're getting out of here. And it's like, we're really just letting him go? And it's like, yeah. And um, Reddington was ready for him. It's like, cool. The moment they drive away, we need to hit them fast. Because whoever hired them, the fact is, it's not just Reginald. It's even the lawyer, too. They know too much. They need to be taken care of. And before they even had a chance to hit them, they got hit. Uh, rolled up. Pow, 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 pow. Took out the lawyer and Reginald. It was like, cool, those secrets die with you. That sucks. So, now it's fully back to square one. Harold's not in the best position right now either because of his circumstances. Now it's like they have no case to better his situation. So, indictments are going to start rolling out then and there. I even thought that was interesting too that Harold said that line of, I thought I was protecting Agnes, giving her a, a, a stable life, doing good by keeping Reddington away just because of everything. And it's like, ironically enough, here I am too. And that's also the reason why Reddington was like, yo, Marvin, I want you to represent Harold. He can't go to jail, not only for his sake, but also for Agnes's. He, she, he's become a stable part of her life for these past two years. He, he can't go to jail. He needs to be there for her, so... Like I said, at the end of the day, we are back to square one. Because it's not like Andrew can give them anything else. He led them to Reginald, and Reginald's the only one who he had a connection with. And with that connection severed, with him dead, there's no other... Because every other loose end was tied to Reginald. There are people he interacted with, whether it's the bartender or... Because um, obviously killing um, Charlene's ex-lover was just the ammunition they needed to kidnap... Uh, to um, to frame Harold, so there's no connection there. I mean, at least it doesn't seem like it. So, once again, my top two people, I'm like, might have something, some part to play in this. Maybe, not that they're top tier people, but, I mean, not less Marvin is, but, you know, he might have certain connects, but, well, we also know uh, Reginald Cole was like, black, like, kind of blackmailing other people too, like that lady, he was just blackmailing her, so she's probably high enough, but, Whatever connections probably stop there. Like, she probably only goes as far as Reginald Cole. Like, all the, the data off his computer is gone. So, probably looking into any of that. I mean, I'd assume you'd have to pay attention to any connections he had in the past. Like, why he was able to just kind of continue. Like, just how he was able to just get away with everything that he did in the past back when he was a New York detective. So, he must have had ties and connections then like did he reach out to someone higher up and powerful that he knew and had ties to or was it someone powerful that reached out to him because once again this whole andrew thing he got like he, that technology was given to reginald years ago once again i don't think like i said my initial thought was like wait have they been planning to kill Liz this entire time it's like no whoever it is has been sitting on it 
maybe orchestrating a plan to come after Reddington in some shape or form. Because whoever this is, it's trying to... Because I wonder, like, because whatever... Them killing Liz removed Reddington from the equation for two years. And the reason why this is all happening now is because he came back and started asking questions. They never expected Reddington to come back into the picture. And if it wasn't for Cooper, he never would have. So... I mean, I guess that's probably double reason to get rid of Cooper. It's like, right, because we need to undo this task force. We can't allow it to continue. We can't allow Reddington to continue doing what he's doing. That's why I'm like, Marvin must be like, like chipping away at some of that power, wanting it for himself. Because we know somebody, once again, has came into his operation and is benefiting from it. So it has to be someone within his circle, or at least someone... And once again, you, you would think it'd be Marvin. It would make sense for Marvin to benefit the most. So, not unless it's some other past connection, whether it's someone we've never met before, but someone was benefiting and because took over a large stake of what he left. Because he, the whole point was to pass it on to Liz, but after Liz died, he just let it fall to the wayside. And Dembe did somewhat his best to handle a lot of that, but eventually, you know, after everything went down, it just, it took too much of a toll on him, so everything that, you know, eventually came full circle and ended up getting his daughter wrapped into it, so he ended up becoming a detective instead, I mean, not, uh, an FBI agent instead, so a lot of that fell to the wayside, hence why someone just swooped in, sw uh, got it all up, started benefiting from it, so who that might be, it has to be someone Reddington is extremely familiar with whoever it is has to be familiar enough to know that the task force exists once again that could just be whoever is involved in all this had connections but this this thing this at least that device has been in play for a couple years now so this plan could have been something they've been planning for the past couple years because andrew never went into, into specifics of when he like he just said a few years ago is when he gave it to reginald beyond that we never really got any details so that is just a lot. This looks like a not good situation. Like I said, it's like you have no clues. I don't even know where you begin looking at what lanes you kind of look at things from going forward from here. What do they do for Harold now, uh, considering the circumstances? Um, obviously, Donald's going to be probably leading the team a little bit going forward from here. I'm, I'm, I would assume we'd be seeing a lot more uh, Cynthia going forward as well just because of these said circumstances. Checking in on, let's see what ends up happening with Lou, what happens with Harold, um, how the task force kind of function without um, Harold's leadership, how Reddington begins to, what, what his next move is going to be. Because I even love that for him, he said that line when he was talking to Weecher early on where he's like, I don't even think I've even seen how far down the rabbit hole I can end up going. Like how, how more, how he's always had his darker side his darker inclinations but he's like i've never really i'm not even sure like how like i can't i think i haven't even scratched the surface of how far i could go and even which was like no i don't think you have either so even to the point when he ran into andrew kennison when they like got him from the marshals he had the gun to his face and in which is like remember what we're here for because he was just so driven, like, you're responsible for my daughter's death. Like, you, it's because of your device. Yes, he had no idea that this was going to happen. He wanted to help people. He had the best of intentions. He, and he was desperate. That was the whole point. Usually people um, offering you the world typically come to you when you're at your most desperate. Because they know that you're not thinking clearly. I mean, who would have seen this happening? That, oh, the device, you, this medical device you made because of what happened to your wife. The tragedy and everything. Um, that you giving it to a police officer because they want to use it to track criminals. Which I'm like, that's that in itself kind of seems a little... Not seems it, that's some futuristic shady shit, but um, but to know that after a couple years, it's like yeah, that was going to, going to be used to uh kill an FBI agent. It's like no one would have immediately thought of that. So either way, it's going to be interesting to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Uh, there's only also only a couple episodes left in this season. I believe this was episode was this. 15, I think. I can't think of it off the top. I want to say it's like 15, so... 
it's only like seven-ish episodes left, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, where these last episodes of the season end up taking us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next home you meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and good night.